Hello and welcome to Jimmy's Three Things. Thank you very much for tuning in today. I appreciate you. My name is Jimmy. There's three things in Major League Baseball that I want to discuss. One, the rookies are here. SEC? SEC, the new double A? No, but cool stuff from last year's draft. Maddox documentary came out, and I haven't seen it. Some of the, the one clip about him calling pitches is, is amazing. It's everything it's my favorite thing I think I could ask for out of a documentary, to be honest. And then the third thing, I, I ran into some wild two-strike stats that I'm going to share with you guys. So I'm going to take a sip of my water, and then we're going to get going. All right, I saw this tweet from, oh, I forgot to say, uh, Jimmy's Three Things is a production of Dan Patrick Productions, John Boy Media. And Workhouse Media. So shout out to them. Shout out to you. If you to find yourself tuning in regularly, you enjoy the show, subscribe. That helps a ton. Uh, I saw this tweet here that I have on my screen that says Skeens Cruz Langford. This is the first time in 27 years that three of the top four picks from a draft class have debuted in the big leagues by the following season. The big three. SEC. So I saw this tweet and it is really cool. It's cool to get kids uh, up and promoted right away. Uh, where did I have the draft class page? Here it is. So you got Skeens. Pirates took Skeens. One overall. The Nats took Dylan Cruz. Two overall. And then the Tigers took high schooler Max Clark from Indiana. Three. He's a high schooler. So he's not going to be as advanced as the other three who were all were in college and are 21 years old. Wyatt Langford taken by the Rangers. Um, and all SEC schools, Florida and Louisiana. And then uh, you got Walker Jenkins. So let's see what... Well, let's just... What did I want to look at first? One, I was laughing at the tweets and I'm, I'm happy that... Oh, you can't even view quote tweets on desktop anymore. Um, maybe you can. Oh yeah, you can't do it on your phone. I saw a lot of people saying that SEC is the new double A, which I like. I'm proud that the SEC is proud that they graduated these kids into the draft and got up right away. I would, I was like, I was getting salty. I don't know why. I don't know why I was getting salty, but I was like, it's not the new double A guys. Come on now. Let's be honest with ourselves. More kids have debuted this year that were in double A last year than that were in the SEC. Um, so then I was pulling up those numbers and I found, you know, you got by, by war leaders, Jackson Merrill was in double A last year. He's playing well. Jackson Chirio was in double A last year. Max Schumann of the Oakland athletics was in double A last year. And he's got, Plus war this year, I guess. Where is he? Maybe. Where was, what was, what was, what was the name I just said? Max Schumann. Where is he? It's got to be on this list somewhere. No. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. 20th in war 1.4. So anyway, I'm going to speed roll through this first topic. The next two topics I was very excited for. I was very excited for this, but then as I continued on my research, we kept going. But I wanted, I checked to see if Skeens had faced Cruz or Langford in the minors. They never did. I don't know if I can check college game logs. Obviously, Cruz and Skeens were, were teammates. I mean, if I Google that, I just go Skeens versus Langford. College, surely they faced each other. Paul Skeens versus Wyatt Langford. Let's watch it. Okay. Oh, this is Baseball America. All right, here we go. First pitch. Heater. Right in there. Strike one. They're both wearing USA jerseys, so. Damn it. I got the results spoiled for me by the YouTube description. Let's see what he goes with next. Same pitch. Tried to get the outside edge. Didn't find it. Here we go. One and one's the count. That was the sinker, splinker, whatever. Fouled back. One and two. Does he throw a breaking ball here? Does he throw a sweeper? 
Catcher's given the signs. He's staring in and outside, I guess. Looks like a decent pitch. Sinker got him swinging. That was rather uneventful. Anyway, I was looking up other stuff. Oh, yeah, Max Clark. Let's look at him. People are people are into Max Clark. I mean, he's got he's got style. From Indiana, Franklin, Indiana, Franklin Community High School. Has, has has anyone else come from his high school? George Crow in 1921. That's his competition. George Crow, 809 career OPS in 11 years. So Max Clark, kid, uh, look out. You got to beat George Crow if you want to be the best ever from your high school. That's tough. George Crow. Let's see. Crushing it in the, I'm guessing, is this two different teams? These are the Negro League teams. 1948 Negro National League, two team statistics. National? Okay, I'm not as familiar as I should be with that. Uh, but a bunch of good years. He was an all-star one year. This is his worst year offensively. It's a third, it was a first baseman. Did he platoon a lot? Looks like he might have platooned. Do we have splits on guys from... The 60s? He must have had a great start to the year in 1958. Or there was two different All-Stars, so maybe it was 1958 splits. Nickname was Big George, two-time All-Star. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, mostly faced right-handed batters. Did not get a lot of plate appearances versus left-handed, bat- left-handed batters. First half was way better. That's why All-Star... It's kind of just a first half award, you know. He had a 305 batting average. Anyway, Max Clark, good luck. You got a, you got a, you got a lot of work to do. Uh, but people are very excited about Maxwell Reese Clark, who's in the minors right now, and he was last year. Where was he last year? He was in rookie ball, and then went to single A. And now this year is he's probably still in single A or high A. Yeah, he's in high A this year, and he's doing really well. Good for him. So he can get called up soon, but I mean, not that soon. He's a teenager. You don't really want to rush him. You want, if you're the Tigers, you want to make sure that his window of six years of uh, big league eligibility aligns with a window for you. So he's so young and you can let him, you can let him last. But yeah, wow. Went to high A and immediately been hitting it. Last two games over, so I'm not going to include them. 303 batting average, 380, two homers. Good for the kid. I mean, look at his last couple days. Look at his last couple days in single A. Got out. Come on. Come on. Come on now, Jimmy. You click the right buttons. Be better. Move it along. Got absolutely bored. Look at this week. Or these 21 days in July. 410 batting average, 489 on base, 769 slugging, 1.258 OPS. Uh, in single A for the Lakeland Flying Tigers in July. The, the, it got hot out. He said, yeah, I'm good. I'm bored. Send me up. So now he's playing in West Michigan. Damn. Two different areas. Who is the other kid? Real quick. Who is the other kid that got drafted? Uh, did I lose that page? If I lost that page. Oh, no. Walker, Walker Jenkins. Let's find out what he's about. Um, and then trust me, I'm, the next two, I'm, I'm so excited about Walker Jenkins. Walker Jenkins is 6'3", lefty, designated hitter, center fielder, right fielder. Get that DH off your bio, Walker. You are, are a prospect and 19 years old. Don't let him call you a DH. You got you to gotta work that out of there, dude. He's crushing. He crushed rookie ball this year. Then he went to single A and did pretty well there. And now he's in uh, high A or low A and high A. Good for him. All right, have you guys seen this thing number two? Have you seen this Maddox documentary? I missed the documentary, and I can't find where to find it uh, to stream it. I don't know if I'm being dumb. MLB TV has a bunch of clips. This clip right here is people tagged me in it because it's just it's absolute gold for me. So let's just play the clip, and then we'll talk about it. It was just trying to understand how hitters see the ball. And then what can I do with the ball to try to trick them? If I'm going to throw a change up, I know it's, it's not worth it. 
unless I've thrown a low fastball for a strike. I have no way to trick the hitter. Yeah. Kind of like, you know, you can't go fishing without bait. You gotta bait the hook. I think they have a fairly complicated set of signs that they go through. I never told this to anybody, but he called his own pitches. I think it's pretty amazing how he did it. So how he caught the ball from Eddie determined what the next pitch was gonna be. When he threw that pitch, he got fastball away. Fastball inside. Tap his leg with his glove. That is a sign to Eddie Perez. This is Chenja, a cutter, and Kerbal was this. Nobody ever knew it. I mean, it was kind of brilliant. They don't call the professor for nothing. That is awesome. That is beyond awesome. I love that. So for those that are just listening, if he caught the ball back from the catcher close to his body with his glove, that meant he wanted to throw inside fastball. If he caught it away from his body, that meant he wanted to throw an uh, outside fastball. If he picked his nose or scratched his nose, that was curveball. And if he wiped his forehead, that was cutter. That's, I mean, if you're a hitter now, I'm going to ask Boone about this on the episode. If you're a hitter now and you're like, wait, what? I, was I supposed to study that? I could have picked up on that. I went and found a random game on YouTube just to like see if I could find it. And I'll be honest, uh, the results from this weren't as uh, exciting as I thought. One, the cameras don't show it a bunch. And uh, a lot of the pitches got put in play. The first couple ones I watched got put in play, which I was like, come on, I need to watch the catcher throw it back to him. But, you know, McGuire came up, popped out first pitch. And then this one, the next first pitch, they throw down the second. So I was kind of in a torture chamber of like, let me watch him catch a ball back from the catcher. Then one gets fouled back. And before we see Smoltz catch it, they cut away. So I just kept hunting. Now here's one. And ah, uh, you can't really tell. See? So I don't know what this is. I'm Because he kind of turns his glove upside down. And they didn't really talk about that. And then they step off and they talk about it because maybe, you know, Perez was confused as well. Ends up being a beautiful Maddox inside front hip sinker for strike three. So that's... Look at that pitch. It's so stupid. Look at this pitch. Aim at his hip. That's... Crazy cool. So I kept searching, and granted, it's just one game, but it was kind of like, wait, I want to find this by myself and really see if it's true. And let me see what I found. That's first pitch, little curveball, foul back. We don't see the throw. And then they got this angle, another slider, and then don't know what that catch is. It wasn't the two they showed in the documentary, and then they're calling pitches. So I guess Perez still put the sign down. Because he wanted to be on the same page. Now, that catch right here, you would think, I would think that's outside fastball. So, let's see. Mm, That was like a slider away. So, yeah. I mean, this one game, it's hard to tell. They did have, you know, everyone talking about it. I just want to see it more. I'm... I, is there any pitcher doing that right now? Who would be the pitcher that would do that right now? Um... Scherzer, Cole, probably Cole. Cole's a real thinking guy's pitcher. Who would be the pitcher right now that is crazy that he would call? Granky probably did that stuff. He Granky would just straight up tell you. He would just like straight up say it, and uh, then you'd have to wonder if he was lying to you or not. But that is so fascinating uh, and cool. And I want to know if there's any other stories about pitchers calling their or secret signals. Kind of there. That's all I need. Tips, tells, and secret signals. Make it a book. Make it a coffee shop book. You know, you got who's the tennis player that Agassi had his serve because he went, uh, he went tongue out when he was going hard and and um, tongue in when he was going soft. Agassi serve tongue tip. It was Becker, Boris Becker. Uh, he would move his tongue in the direction of his serve. I need a coffee table book of all sports. That's, you know, the statute of limitations has passed. Um, tips, tells, and secret signals. Someone write that for me. Interview everyone. In cricket, they call it picking. 
the the bowler and not like uh, getting a tip or a tell. Like I, I picked him, so you can include that too. I mean, goalkeeping in, in soccer, football, like uh, penalty kicks. Uh, come on, write the book. I need it. I need all of it. I love it. I absolutely love it. I ran into a stat that I I ran into a stat that has absolutely baffled me and and floored me and I I can't quite come to grips with it. I don't get it. Joey Gallo, we're on year 3 now of him struggling with high fastballs and and him refusing to adapt to that situation. This season, Joey Gallo has seen 52 four-seam fastballs in the zone with two strikes on him. So that's the that's the game plan on Gallo. You get the two strikes, you throw a fastball. 52 times the pitcher's thrown a two-strike fastball in the zone. Gallo has zero hits on those pitches. Zero. Zero. And if you go to pitches out of the zone, because a lot of times you want them to chase the high one, so we'll change it. 52 fastballs in the zone with two strikes on them, zero hits. Now, if you go pitches out of the zone, there's been 38 of those. And if you look at the pitch breakdown of those 38 pitches, 26 have been balls, and the other 12 have been outs or strike three or foul ball. That's, I mean, so I grabbed the footage just so we could, like, witness it. Um, I don't get it. And before we move on, okay, I'll show you this first. Let's just watch this montage. Pitch. And he stays. There you go. I had help because there was 500 feet. And a fastball past him. Got the inside corner. Gallup the uppercut. Ready? 0 oh, 2 pitch fouled away. 2 2 offering. Swing and a miss. He struck him out with some high heat. 2 runner breaks for second. It will not matter. No. Gallo. And. It's not a lot of. Co- right by him. Fastball up and in to strike him out. Fastball by him. Swing and a miss and a ball bust run. You see the slide step there. Yep. And he's still able to. Swing and a miss. He got him. He went upstairs. Towering pop up. Fights it off. He has so many other pitches. The foul. And it's fouled off to. And a call. Strike three right on the end. Slider. Swing and a miss. Two to Joey Gallo. Swung through for strike three. Found a way to gear it back in. And a strike. The tech swing. I mean, that's a run. Oh, what a big swing. Right in oh, there. My. That one was a ball. By you for strike three. Two, two. Strike came out. One, two. Called strike three. Two and two. Gallo takes strike three. Two. Strikes out the side in order. One, two pitches popped out of play. Three, two pitch. Called strike three. Got him. And that's the ball game is Miller. Got him. There's a healthy rip at a 90. Got him. Got him again. 2 2 and Joey Gallo foul tips it into a strikeout. And a mile. Healthy hack by the Nats. 
Runner goes. Gallo. High fly. They go. Foul back. Winker off. Gallo loops a foul. Winker on the move. Gallo pops it up. Winker goes. Gallo pops it up. To both sides. It's so important. Struck him out. Two. Strike three call. In his height. And he, gets and he strikes out Joey. It's this one in the air to right. Got a baby. Over his Duval into the gap. Down the left field line, but this one is going to go foul. Oh, oh nice. What? Gallo sends this one to left center. Bader is over. Strike three call. So that's painful to watch because Gallo's got so much athletic talent and ability, and the fact that he won't switch to a two-strike approach is crazy to me because he could be so... He's got the ability. He's so athletic. Uh, and like, it was when he was with the Yankees, it was like, dude, make an adjustment and you can be so good. If you switch it to include sinkers and cutters, so all fastballs, not just four-seam, you're going to up you're going to up it we'll do pitches in the zone two strikes we're including we're including sinkers and four seams it jumps up to 68 pitches and he does have two hits and one of them is a homer in San Francisco and you can see it's got that sink to it where it it comes down and finds the barrel it's actually yeah it's right into a swing which is nice and the other one the other hit is probably an error and a line drive it hops it's off the glove of triolo joey gallo so two hits on two strike fastballs out of out of 68 and if you look at the the pitch chart, where they are in the zone, um, you know, most of them are high. And it's just, who who's who's pitching to Gallo and, and, and giving up hits on non-fastballs? Is it, do they, do they exist? Um, base hit, pitch type. Uh, off-speed, breaking, other pitches. And how many hits does he have with two strikes? He has two on sinkers that we know. Okay, so he's got four two... So he's only got six two-strike hits on the year. Um, And we got... So who are these pitchers and what are they doing not throwing him fastballs? We got this one. What, what was that defense? Okay, so that was a bad changeup. Why would you throw him a changeup? Right. Not really a good hit, but a sweeper. Blooped it in there. Changeup's a terrible pitch to throw him two strikes. Crazy. Crazy. I mean, so oh, if I take away two strikes and I just go, if I just go fastballs, a four seam fastball. I don't care about two strikes. I don't care about the results. I want to know game day zones, attack zones. Let's go one, two, three, eleven, twelve, thirteen. How many hits does he have there on just high four-seam fastballs? 87 times he's seen a pitch there. And, oh, shit. He's seen 87. 26 are balls. So, 61. 
He's put three in play, and he has one hit. Fuck, man. Why aren't you changing your swing? He's put two in play, and he has one hit on high fastballs. Yeah, it breaks my heart, to be honest. It's, I'm not trying to rag on the guy. Like, that is heartbreaking that we can't get him to, to switch. The fun side is, if you look at, Bryce Iglesias has thrown 57 two-strike fastballs this year. 57 two-strike fastballs this year. And on those 57 two-strike fastballs, he's given up zero hits. Zero hits on two strike fastballs. Eight have been put in play. 11 whiffed. 18 were balls. So 57 minus 18. I'm going to do that on the calculator. 39. 39 pitches. No hits. Bryce Iglesias. Has, how many two strike hits has he given up? Doesn't matter the pitch, just two strikes, plate appearance, base hit. Let's see. He has five. And so they've all been on the slider, change up, change up, change up, slider. Shohei, Harrison Bader. Why? Okay, throw the fastball. Zero. How is that possible? Zero. Let's see if I can find the video of them. That was a dotted fastball. Okay. Abrams, right at him, fouled back. Next one, two outs, two strikes to end the game. Outside, got him. Here's Alec Bohm. Up and in, fouled back, stays alive. Same at bat. Goes low, put in play, caught. No hits. That's crazy. Wow, up and away. He must be setting it up so perfectly. He must be setting it up. 0-2. Wow. All right, so I'm going to do this. Swing and miss, 0-2, fastball. It's worked every time. And every time, the or three times the pitch before has been slider, slider, change. Down and away, down and away. Okay, so this at bat. To, to Ahmed Rosario, the 0-1 pitch was a middle, middle fastball that was fouled back, and he followed that up with just another fastball. <laughs> okay, so this one was a down and in fastball that Palacios took for a strike, and he followed that. With another down and in. So he doubles it up sometimes. Okay, now this was the 0-1 pitch to Yaz was a down and in, down and away changeup. So where does he spot this fastball? Away? Up. Yeah, that's pretty nice. And then this was a down and away slider, and he follows that up with an away. This was a middle in slider followed up by a middle fastball. So he's usually chasing the same location on the off speed. This was a down and away change up. So, and it's Gallo. So there should be an up and in fastball away fastball. Oh, let's just search that real quick. And then I really got to end this one at bat, four pitches, swinging strike on a slider, swinging strike on a change up. Ball on the fastball, and then he went back to the changeup, which you're saying, you're saying, why wouldn't you go high fa fastball, Rysel? That's what everyone knows. But there was two on and one out, and he's like, I need the double play here, so I'm going to go low. Feeds himself, gets both outs, <laughs> ends the ends the tenth inning. Gallo, ooh, nice gums. Look at this. Look at Gallo putting on a display of gum kicking. Watch this. Spits the gum out, then boots it. Bam, I used to do that as a kid and then try to catch it in my mouth.